Exodus. Turn to the 15th chapter, and we just want to lift up a few verses from 22 to closing. Verse 22 to closing. Verse 22 to closing. If you have Exodus in the 15th chapter in the King James Version of the Bible, there would be some words that would be in your presence that I believe would help you. We're going to ask you to be so kind as to stand and Christian to stand to honor God's word as it's read. Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 22. Two through 27. King James records it thusly, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord uh -huh. that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Amen. Father God, we ask you to give us permission to enter into thy holy and sanctified word. Yeah. That we may have a way to enlighten your people. That they may hear from the Lord and be able to say, did not our hearts burn? As we heard the magnificent, the mighty, and the freeing word of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Yes. This is our plea. Move now the man and present now the preacher. This I ask in Jesus' name and for our sake, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Very often learning lessons is a bitter experience. While this is true, it is also true that experiences are the best teachers. You can tell a child repeatedly, 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 hot. But until they touch the stove, you can tell a child over and over to stop. But until the consequences come up, it seems like we are always pushing the envelope. Children learn so many lessons when they know that hot relates to pain. Children of God, at times, the only time that we learn is when God says stop and we go and the pain, the consequences that come after it. We learn some of our best lessons from being burnt. It is a lesson that we will not soon forget. It is a bitter lesson but sometimes it's bitter lessons that we have to learn. 
Unfortunately, we all seem to possess the same characteristics. We have to be burned before we can learn. In the passage, Israel is fresh from a great spiritual victory. They have been delivered from slavery. They have been given a new life. Yes. And they have witnessed God destroying their enemies in the depths of the Red Sea. Uh -huh. And they sing songs of the power of God. Uh -huh. Verse 15 and 1 of this same chapter it says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel the song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed glories. Yeah. The horse and his rider have been thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength yeah. and song. He has become my salvation. Yeah. Yeah. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Amen. They were pleased by the work of God, and they were found singing. They went on a little further, and I see in the third verse, it says, The Lord is a man of war, yeah. and the Lord is his name. Oh, they yeah. were letting it be known that God will go to war. Yeah. They were letting it be known that when God goes to war, he goes to win. Somebody ought to yeah. say amen. amen. They were letting it be known that the God I serve, he can't do. Somebody ought to be happy right there. Yeah. Somebody know there's some things going on in your life and you can't handle them. But if you turn them over to the Lord. Yeah. Now verse 3 tells us one thing, but I look into the text and it says three days later. They faced the trial. After three days, there was no water. They will come to this place that's called Mount. While they were there, they learned three valuable lessons. It is a place that these three lessons that I want to focus on today. It may be someone here that's going through the trial of a lifetime. If so, these verses, you will learn some good lessons. If you will allow the Lord to teach them to you. If everything in your life is selling along smoothly, then look out. Wow. One day as soon you will come to your own mouth. Amen. You will come to your own place. When this happened, you may need the information that I want to share with you this morning. This morning, I want to step back and join Israel at Mount. Mm -hmm. And let's think together on the subject, lessons learned mm -hmm. at life's bitter pool. Wow. Somebody saw this said amen. amen. There are lessons to be learned at life's <coughs> bitter pool. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us only want to learn lessons when we're on the good side, but I stand to tell you, I've learned more in my losses than I've learned in my win. Yeah. We need to sit on the edge of your seat, fight the sleep demon and the wandering spirit that's assigned to you, that you may be able to hear what God is trying to tell you, yeah. so that when you learn this lesson, yeah. life's lessons that's learned in life's bitter pool, well, somebody up in here better learn before you burn. Yeah. Somebody said the last lesson yeah. I learned was the last time I got burned. Yeah. Somebody knows that when you're going through, it looks like you just came out. Yeah. It looks like I just came out and I'm on the way through another situation. Yeah. Seems like I just went through the fight of my life. Yeah. And here's yeah. another fight standing Facing me down. Yeah. Some, 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 somebody know that woman acts a lot like the one that burned me last. My daughters, you know that that man, that buster that you hanging out with, he sure resembled that last loser you was hanging out with. See, like every corner I turn, I run into somebody who looks a lot like somebody that has bothered me in my past. It looked like I can't ever shake them and get far enough away from them. It always looked like I'm running into one hurdle after another. But I come to find out that if I'm going to run this race, if there are some hurdles, I must get over. If I'm going to complete this course, I'm not always going to be running in a straight line. There are going to be some curves along the way. I'm going to learn how to run in the curve. I'm going to learn how to jump over some hurdles. Yeah. I believe that there are three lessons that's in this text. 
and they're valuable lessons if you're willing to learn. The first thing that I looked into the text, they learned some lessons about life. I think we all need to know that there are some lessons, Marco, about life that we must learn. Life, first of all, is a mixture. Life is not all of one thing, but life is a mixture of a lot of things. Israel had just experienced the blessings, but now they must face the bitter. Somebody knows that our parents used to tell us that you have to learn how to take the bitter. I don't know if they knew this text, but it sure fits in well. Mama and them will tell us in a minute, learn, boy, to take the bitter with the sweet. My grandfather had a different way of saying it. He said there's some good in the worst and some bad in the best. He is letting me know that no matter how you try to separate it, that every once in a while, no matter how careful you are, the little yoke is going to get in with the egg white. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I suppose, I suppose that some of us just want the good side of life. We only want God to deliver us after all, he is God. After all, he did make me some promises. After all, he do know me, don't he? He do know I almost paid my tithes one day. He do know I pray every once in a while. He do know that I will show up to the church house once in a while. He do know that I expect him to show up for me. I suppose they, like a lot of people in our day, assume that once you sign up to follow the Lord, everything is going to be perfect. I want you to hang on to that for a moment. We come to church and think, I should have a perfect life. It should be perfect for me now. I've turned my life over to God. And they are not willing to handle the bumps in the road. Unfortunately, this is just faulty thinking. According to God's word, life is a mixture of good and bad. Yes. If old man Job could show up this morning and we could take him from the fifth chapter and the seventh verse, he says, yet man is born unto trouble. And then he moved on a little further, a place that we all are familiar in the 14th chapter and the first verse. And he said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they are filled with trouble. He is letting us know that this trouble that's assigned to it is not just at your house. But you can look at your neighbor, they may be looking good at this morning, but they have some trouble Amen. at their house. Amen. I don't care how well they look, how good the cologne smell it, how deep they have put the room on. Somebody has a room on because they cried all night. We understand that there's trouble that's a sign to all of us. Yeah. While this outlook may seem depressing, we are also aware that life has its yeah. wonderful moments. Yeah. We do understand that we as children of God, we not always would have to hang our head down. Because I'm glad that the text tells me that God will lift up your head. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. I understand that life is a mixture. And the sooner I began to take the bitter with the sweet. Yeah. The sooner I'll quit church hopping. The sooner I'll quit friend swapping. The sooner I'll be able to be a better friend than I was yesterday. But I learned that life is a mixture. I quit holding people accountable to my happiness. Sometimes we take our happiness, give it to folk. They're not careful with it. They drop it and we lose our focus. This Israel group, they had found that God had delivered them in now they're following after this man Moses and he leads them into a place they don't want to be. Life is full of mixtures. But not only is life full of mixtures, but life has a master. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 It's bad to have mixtures without a master. When I found in the text, when Israel arrived at Moriah, they seemed to forget all the wonderful things that God had done for them in the past. They forgot the plagues, their deliverance. They forgot the miracle at the Red Sea. They forgot that all in all God had been good to them. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Somebody ought to realize you may be at a difficult place right now. But if you just roll back your memory a little bit, you can remember God has been good to you. Amen. Somebody yeah. saying, God bless this one and that one. Well, where is my blessings? Your blessings are on the way. 
God knows when you need them the most. Amen. They if they would have got it on the first day, they wouldn't have given glory to God. Right. If they had got it on the second day, they right. might have thought Moses led it to. But yeah. God laid away three days. Tell your neighbors out one more.